SBC Media. Welcome to the iGaming Daily podcast, analysing the news from the betting and gaming industry all over the globe. Supported by Optimove, the number one CRM marketing solution for the iGaming market. Everyone loves a good discount. Whether that's a renowned Black Friday offering that consumes most of the Western world every November, or a free money offering in iGaming. It's fair to say, on the outset, marketers use these methods as an effective acquisition tool. However, do firms need to focus on their marketing generosity and look to keep it in check? This will be the topic of the latest episode of our CRM Focus series on iGaming Daily, supported by Optimove, as I'm joined by Optimove's Shai Frank, the SVP Product and General Manager Americas at Optimove, who produced a four-part blog series on the matter. How are you doing, Shai? You okay? Hey, yes, great to be here and... uh... Great to participate in this uh, great podcast. Oh, thank you very much. What I've really loved about this uh, CRM focus series, we started off with Penny for the first few episodes. And Penny, Penny loves to talk. I absolutely love having Penny on the podcast. We get through two questions, but it's really informative and it's great. But what I've actually liked now is we've started to kind of incorporate more people within Optimove and just kind of navigate more through your company and kind of what you do in X, Y, and Z. And it's good to have you on, Shai. Um, I read your blog post, your blog series, really fascinating, really in depth. And it made me kind of think out of kind of the box of marketing, which I never really thought of before. And even spoke to our uh, marketing guys within SBC and I was like, have you seen this? Like, you need to have a look. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. We are, uh, we're pretty proud of, uh, obviously of our, of our product and platform, but, uh, but recently we, we, we realized we need to start talking more about stuff that uh, our clients are doing with our with our system and the great possibilities they present to brands in general marketers in particular and mm. crm and generosity is is definitely a, a topic that we really think we can help uh brands and operators uh take to the next level so happy to join and geek out on this stuff as much <laughs> as possible <laughs> I will, you know, geek, geek out away. Do as much geeking out as you want. I will implore you to do it. But what I will say to the listeners, I've left links in the description um, to the blog series of this podcast. I'd advise you before we start to open these blog series just so you can follow through as well to read what Shai put and because we're going to be talking about it, but it's going to be a bit more in depth in the article as well. It will help you when we go through this. So links are in the description below. Open them. I'll give you five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. That was a quick five. And we're going to delve into it now. So first off, Shai, kind of, this is obviously four parts of this blog series. So there's, there's quite a lot of information, but what were your key takeaways from this series? I think our main key takeaways is that um, we know we know from the iGaming industry that it's very it's very promotional and it's very bogus heavy mm-hmm. and and brands are using a lot of uh, promotional money to acquire and retain players which is understandable uh, i think our main takeaway from this entire series was that there is definitely an enormous opportunity to optimize uh both the spend as well as the player experience that comes along with it so it's essentially uh, hitting two birds with one stone, you can you can really improve your player experience and provide the right promotions and the right bonuses at the right time, right level, uh, to both make your players feel that they are being uh, heard and and the and their brand is, is is feeling their need and anticipating their need and provide them with great experience, while at the same time significantly improving profit margins and not overspending on on over generosity so this is this is the great the the, the, the main key, uh, key takeaway from that and obviously we can share more about the specific tools and strategies and the tactics that uh brands can use uh, mm-hmm. when they do that and how op- optimum can help them achieve that yeah you mentioned in the first part that um it's important for marketers to acknowledge generosity as an important first step. Why is that? I think, you know, yeah, people are creatures of habit, right? So, so... Love that phrase. Yeah. So, so 
you work in an industry and you're used to doing the things you're used to doing and, and they become like a nature to you. So, you know, yeah, when I, when I want to acquire a, when acquire a new player, I'm obviously, obviously going to run a campaign that has some big uh, deposit X, get Y in bonus bets. Uh, it's, it's obvious, right? It's what we've always done. So mm-hmm. I'll just do it. Um, and sometimes the, you know, half of the half of solution of a problem is acknowledging that the, the existence of a problem or even framing the fact that what you are doing is not the great the greatest way to accomplish what you are trying to accomplish just mm-hmm. this acknowledgement is half of the way to to creating a better result so if you frame a problem and in, in, in the product world where i'm coming from framing of a, of a situation as a problem or as an opportunity is a very important thing to do because then it lets you think, oh, okay, so maybe I can do the same thing, but different players can get different levels of generosity. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, I'm, I'm more profitable, uh, which is what we all care about, right? So, um, so I think it's important to, first of all, acknowledge that you are being either generous in general or over generous in particular mm-hmm. or in specific situations. And then once you acknowledge that, you can say, okay, is it important enough for me to actually do something about it? And if yes, so let's talk. Mm-hmm. You also mentioned predictive models. How can predictive models assist marketers in kind of aligning generosity with uh, shopping behavior? Yeah, that's a, that's a big topic. I think, um, I think when, when you have a lot of data about your customers uh, mm-hmm. and you can gauge what they're doing and what customers like them have been doing in the past, you can you can deduce a lot of a lot of conclusions from that. You can do it manually through reporting mm-hmm. uh, and analysis, but you can use machine learning uh, if your data is structured in a in a good way and, and you have a platform that allows you to do that, like Optimal. Then predictive models can help you anticipate what might happen if you do something. So mm-hmm. you can look at the segment of customers and anticipate their future lifetime value based on their characteristics and based on their engagement so far with you, based on their gaming preferences, their betting behavior, their patterns, their, their, the, the, the times in which they're more active, types of, um, types of games that they're more active on. So it really helps you anticipate their future value and then also deploy the right CRM strategy for each of those segments. So if you have high value but also high risk of churn group of customers, you might want to focus on that more than on low risk of churn, low value Mm -hmm. uh, players, right? So, and Mm -hmm. and by value, I mean not just the value that they've uh, compounded so far, but also their predicted value going into the future. So you might see this is a player or a group of players that have a high likelihood of becoming top spenders with me. They haven't yet. They are still in the beginning of their journey with me, but predictive models show me that they have high potential. So I want to focus on them and retain them and maybe shift some of my promotional budgets on that group of customers versus someone else. Or if I have a predictive model about a chance of becoming a, a, a bonus abuser or, a, mm-hmm. or, a, or a, an, like an like a at-risk player from a, from a responsible gaming perspective, then you can team your your strategy with them and yeah. anticipate the problem before it hits you in, in your face. So predictive models play a, a big a big role there in the overall personalization and optimization strategy. And uh, this is why we, we put a lot of emphasis on them. Perfect. In in your answer you mentioned machine learning and there's there's two letters which has been circulating this industry for the last twelve months and that's AI. What role does AI play in kind of managing and optimizing market generosity? Yeah, so there's a lot of hype uh, around AI, which is which is great because you know uh, people in the industry or people on the on the vendor side of the industry have been have been talking about AI for ages, and, and since the uh, an Optimove has been doing has been providing AI solutions for more than a decade now. Now AI is becoming commoditized with the proliferation of um, you know, ChatGPT and, and tools like that. So now everyone, every every kid 
uh, can use AI, which wasn't the case up until about 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. But AI has a lot of facets. So machine learning is obviously uh, an aspect of AI and deep learning and large language models that are now powering those ChatGPT experiences are another flavor of AI. Um, we chose to uh, to use AI mostly for predictive models as well as for decisioning and optimization. So you can use AI to generate content for a, for a marketing message. And we mm -hmm. obviously do that too. Um, but for the context of generosity and, and, and optimization, when you use AI for decisioning, you can, you can move from a strategy of test and learn to a strategy of continuous optimization, which is a big thing because we all know that running tests and experiments is not an easy thing to do. Uh, you have to set up your test, you have to set up your experiment, you have to analyze the results, and then you have to draw conclusions from the results and deploy a strategy based on that. So mm -hmm. imagine that you want to you wanna test uh, different levels of generosity to a, to a certain segment of players. Uh, this is already an advanced uh, mindset. But so, and let's say you're running your, uh, your test or experiment in the middle of NFL season, just as an example, right? Mm -hmm. So you're saying, I'm going to offer three levels of, of bonus generosity to this segment of players on a certain, uh, on a certain campaign or a certain journey. Um, and you have a diverse group of customers that you are testing this strategy with. Now, it could be that based on your test results, you realize that there is a sub-segment of players that don't need much incentive to be engaged. So you don't have to spend too much money on them. Um, and all of a sudden, so you run this test, you run this, uh, you get those results and you adjust your strategy based on that. So here's a group of players that get more and a group of players that get less based on these test results. Now time goes by, comes February, NFL season ends, and all of a sudden this group of players that you didn't give a lot of generosity to because they were already kind of spontaneously engaged their engagement level drop. <laughs> and why is that? What, what happened? So maybe these group of players were, you know, big NFL fans. So as long as NFL season uh, was happening, they, they were engaging, right? They, they were playing. They were very highly active, highly engaged, didn't need a lot of incentive. And as soon as NFL season ends, all of a sudden, you know, they need more incentive to stay engaged. You don't want to wait until next September to acquire them again, to reacquire your existing players, which is a disease we see with a lot of with a lot of uh, brands and operators that keep acquiring the, the cut their customers again and again and again, and the cost of acquisition is obviously enormous. Uh, so what you need to so what happened is that you you, you ran a test, which is a good thing, uh, and you deployed the CRM strategy based on the test results, which is a good thing, but if you think about it, uh, running your future marketing campaigns based on test results from now is like skating to where the puck is instead of skating to where the puck is going to be. Um, in other words, the, your test results are becoming obsolete as soon as the test is over. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are using AI to optimize your campaign strategy. It's essentially as if you're, you, you're doing test, test results, new tests, new results, and new deployment of strategy every day, all the time, on an ongoing basis. So it could be that you're running an experiment for two or three levels of generosity. And instead of doing it once and selecting the winning strategy, you continuously do so. So with the same group of players, during NFL season, AI will choose a less generous offer to them. But as soon as NFL season ends and their engagement levels start to drop, AI will automatically adjust and divert, the, divert those customers to the more generous uh, journeys compared to before. So using AI can help you overcome seasonality like that, changes in player preferences, changes in your, you know, uh, catalog assortments, 
Um, so some games, uh, you, you introduce new games, you introduce new experiences, um, you sunset some, some games. This is, you know, this is relevant also outside of gaming as well. Right. So think about you as a retailer, uh, why do you change your product? Or so, right? so how do I know which products a customer will, will choose? So this is the same thing, right? And it's applicable for gaming as well. So AI can help you just continuously optimize and cater for changes that obviously happen in your in your uh, player database without you even knowing. Perfect. Yeah. And you mentioned you mentioned journeys, and I think that's a nice little segue to the next question. And just for the listeners, you might want to skip to I believe it's either blog three or four for this. We're going to talk about Optimus self optimizing journeys. Yes. Can you just explain to us what that is before we tell a bit more into it? Yes, so um, like a good uh, product person, I will I will start with describing the prop. So mm-hmm. um, imagine as a as a marketer, um, you have all kinds of campaigns and experiences that you have in mind, right? Mm-hmm. You have all kinds of uh, life cycle campaigns, right? So how am I communicating with new players? How am I communicating with active players? How am I communicating with uh, high risk of churn? Uh, reactivation, um, things along these lines. Mm-hmm. And you also have a bunch of um, ad hoc offers, right? So specific events. Um, you, you mentioned Black Friday in the t- introduction, but same thing goes with uh, the Euros or Copa America that just ended or uh, Super Bowl or March Madness or any other one. So you, you, you start lining up uh, campaigns and journeys for those events. You have birthday, you have uh, responsible gaming content. You have all of these different mix of offers and campaigns and journeys that each one on its own make a lot of sense, hopefully. Uh, but then players are humans that behave in very unpredictable way. And all of a sudden, uh, James, on a certain day, you become eligible to four different campaigns because you're in the, in the middle of your welcome journey but it also happens to be your birthday and it also happens to be on the verge of march madness and there's something lined up for you because we identified that you are a basketball fan <laughs> um and for whatever reason we also put you in a high risk of churn bucket so you're also eligible to some uh you know please stay with us kind of kind yeah. of thing. so what what do you do? What 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 do you do as a marketer, uh, or what what do what do you expect your your platform to do for you uh, in such a situation? One option is to just send you everything that you are eligible to receive, uh, which could be a good strategy in certain situations, but many times it's not because not only it's spamming too much too much you know messaging. These are also conflicting messages and conflicting offers, very inconsistent experience. So um, so as marketers, you don't want that to happen. So what we see or what we saw happening in the market is, is either an attempt of marketers to tame the beast and create these automations from hell that, in, that you are creating all kinds of splitting conditions and exit criteria in any of the journeys that you create to try to avoid situations where people are eligible to one thing to like eject them from eligibility of another thing. But this is this is unmanageable as you scale, right? We, we actually have this, um, we have this um, Slack channel where we post these uh, automations from health screenshots journey <laughs> that people are creating. So look at this crazy thing, what they've done here. And then, you know, the CRM manager that built this, this monster uh, leaves and the replacement can figure out what's going on there. And there's no way to troubleshoot. So that's one thing we see people have tried to do. Uh, on the other side, on the other hand, when they couldn't manage that, they say, okay, let's do frequency capping. So we won't send you four messages on that day. We'll send you only one because you're capped. But guess what? Frequency capping solves for uh, spamming. It doesn't solve for re- relevancy. It sends their first message that was scheduled, but not the best message that was scheduled. Right? It could be that your generic, your most generic newsletter was scheduled for 8 a.m. in the morning, 
And so you receive that, and now you're capped. You're not getting your deposit amendment um, campaign. You're not getting your high risk of churn. You're not getting your March Madness offer just because they happen to be scheduled for later in the afternoon. That's not a good strategy. So at Optimove, we chose a different path. We say we want customers to get the best campaign for them at every point in time based on whatever it is that they're eligible to receive. That's what we're trying to do. And the solution is called self-optimizing journeys. So essentially, you are, as an example I, I mentioned before, James, you're eligible to multiple campaigns at a given day. What the system will do using AI is evaluate all the different options that may result in sending you each and every one of these campaigns. So if we send campaign A, what will happen? What will happen with James? We know James. We know customers like James, how they previously responded to this campaign A. So we can anticipate or predict. If you get campaign A, this puts you on a path to a journey that looks something like that. You will, you will become eligible to something else tomorrow and the next day and so forth and so, so on and so forth. And we do the same thing. Okay, so what if instead we send you campaign B? And what if instead we send you campaign C? And now AI does a much better job than any marketer in calculating all of these different permutations. Mm -hmm. And eventually, AI will choose the campaign today that will put you on a path to maximize your lifetime value over time. And then it comes tomorrow and the, the, the picture changes completely. You might have called customer support and yelled at them about a promotion that did not activate the way it should have been. So assuming we're integrated to your support system as a brand, let's say it's a Zendesk or something else, um, we get the signal, hey, there's now a ticket, uh, a, a customer care ticket open for James. And that changes the entire eligibility picture for you. Now you're all of a sudden, we might want to suppress campaigns that are too much uh, happy, happy, joy, joy campaigns and, and prioritize something. Oh, sorry, you're experiencing something, uh, some bad experience. Here is, a, here is something to compensate for that. This wasn't, this wasn't in the cards yesterday when we made the calculation, but it is now. So AI will just recalculate the entire journey permutations and again, choose the campaign today that puts you on a path to maximize your retention rates and lifetime value. So this is self-optimizing journeys. The end result is that essentially each customer plots their own path mm -hmm. instead of a marketer just drawing a journey on a canvas and expecting all the customers to follow those, you know, prescribed journeys, which we know doesn't really happen in reality. Yeah. Perfect. Annoyingly shy, we are actually quite short on time. I had quite a lot more questions, might I say, um, but we just don't have time for them. I, I'll try and chase up some of the questions and I'll put them in the comment section of our LinkedIn. But just to round off this podcast, this full series blog post, what is the one thing you would like those readers to take away from it? I think the main, the main point I'd like our audience to, to take is that there is a huge opportunity that, uh, for brands, for, for operators, for marketers to use modern technology to optimize levels of generosity in a way that can produce huge profits to brands while also improving their customer experience. There is a huge opportunity there. There is a lot of money on the table virtually or, uh, or literally just, just use the right tools. And with technology today, it's very easy to do that, uh, with a few clicks and a few, uh, mindsets to put, to, to make you make those clicks. Yeah. Um, you, you can save millions and depends on your size could be even billions of dollars on over generosity that you don't have to spend and focus those savings on crafting greater customer experiences and, um, and innovative solutions to your customers mm -hmm. in a way that will help you differentiate from your competition on your product, on your content, on your offers, rather than overspending on acquiring players again and again, or overspending on retaining them where they might stay with you for a lesser offer. Um, 
think that's the main takeaway. And acknowledging the fact that you might be over generous is, is a is a good start. Understanding predictive models and segmentation is probably the, the next step. And then utilizing AI to move from testing to continuous optimization is the is the is the sucker punch that that drives this call. Cool. Shai, I could I could talk to you for for longer than we've got and hopefully we can have you back on to continue this conversation because like I said, there was a lot more we could we could have got through. Um I'm happy happy to join again and uh, thank you for hosting me. No, it's been my absolute pleasure, Shai. Thank you very much. Again, to the listeners out there, I will leave the links to the blog post in the description below if you've not opened them already to browse at your leisure. But apart from that, I've been James Ross. I've been joined by Shai Frank and this has been iGaming Daily. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to today's iGaming Daily podcast supported by Optimove, the number one CRM marketing solution for the iGaming market. If you want to find out more about some of the subjects raised today, feel free to explore any of the sites in the SBC News Network or check out the latest edition of the SBC Leaders magazine. Happy reading.